Hi, uh, my name is Dan Like, and over the next few minutes, I'm going to be giving you a quick demonstration of backpacking and uh, how to set up camp. So, the first thing you do when you choose a site um, is you're going to want to set up your tent so that you've got shelter established. Now, when you're choosing a site, there's a couple things you want to keep in mind. One, uh, your proximity to your water source, whatever that's a river, lake, whatever it is. Um, you want to be close to it so it's convenient, but not so close that you're low, especially next to rivers. Um, in case there's any kind of flooding, you don't want your tent to be in the middle of a pond. So, first thing you do is just lay your tent out. Now, there's a ton of different kinds of backpacking tents. Um, this is a pretty standard one. This is a two-person tent with a rain fly. So, but uh, most of them are, you know, more or less the same or similar at least. So. Now this, this whole process is, is uh, much more difficult when it's raining or really windy or snowing and stuff like that. So. Now this is usually a little easier with two people, but it's not bad with one. You just do it one pole at a time. So, and this kind of tent doesn't need stakes to stand up like a lot of older tents do. Um, but you do need stakes if you are in a situation where it's really windy. Um, and then you might not e might even need guy lines, which you tie the tent down to stakes that are kind of next, a little bit away from it. You can also tie the tent off to trees, rocks, um, stuff like that. So pretty much whatever you have to do. Now, as you see, this is mostly made of screen material, um, which is good for ventilation and stuff like that, but it's not very good against the rain. So in order to protect your tent from the rain, they have um, what's called a rain fly. And this just goes on over top of the tent, and then it just attaches at each corner. Um, and you can also stake it out like this from the sides to get the rain to go off to the sides. Now this particular tent has what's called a vestibule um, out front, and you just stake this down like this, and that provides you um, a place to put your boots and. Um, backpack and stuff like that if it's raining out, keep it dry. Now in the summertime, you don't, if it's really nice weather out, it's not gonna rain, um, you don't even need this. It just makes the tent hotter. Um, now that runs the risk of waking up in the middle of the night with rain coming in your tent. The next thing that you're gonna wanna do, um, which a lot of people forget about or don't think about, is you wanna set up your sleeping bag and sleeping pad right away. Um, and there's two main reasons for this. One is that most of the bags nowadays are made, of, made with down or synthetic down, which both require time to loft, meaning to get uncompressed and let air kind of work its way into the film material, um, because that's where these bags get their warmth from. So also, you just want to know that you're all set up so that when you're ready to go to bed, you'll have some place relatively warm and comfortable. So then you're good to go. <clears throat> Now, if you're gonna have a fire, which is an awesome thing to do when you're backpacking, is you wanna make sure that you think about that carefully because sparks and hot embers will go right through this outer material, just melt right through it. Um, I have a personal experience with that, so you know, take my word. You probably want it, you have your fire at least 50, 60 feet away from your tent, um, and having it downwind of the tent is obviously better because then the sparks and hot embers and stuff like that will um, not go towards the tent. Now your cooking area, where you set up your stove and stuff like that, doesn't have to be nearly as far apart. It can be a lot closer because you don't have the sparks, um, stuff like that. But, <clears throat> so that's gonna be probably the next thing that you do 
when you get to camp because usually when you get to camp it's you know around dinner time or so because you've been hiking all day or or whatever so now there's a ton of different kinds of stoves as well this is um, a very popular type of stove it's called an msr whisper light it uses liquid white gas fuel um, that you have to pressurize in a tank this is the fuel canister so you just pressurize it like this um, and then you may probably pump it like, you know, 10 or 15 times. Um, and just hook it up. You also need a, what's called a mess kit or your pots and pans, something to cook in. So now these are, these pots are designed for backpacking. Um, just mean they're lightweight and um, they kind of pack together. So in this set we got two saucepans and a frying pan and two plates and cups stuff. It all fits together nicely. So um, now most of the food that you're going to bring backpacking with you, especially on longer trips when you can't bring fresh food because um, it obviously would go bad, um, is this stuff. It's dehydrated food. Um, they have all kinds of different kinds by different companies. Um, you get scrambled eggs with bacon. You got hash browns. And uh, like for dinner, you might have lasagna, or not lasagna, uh, Louisiana red beans and rice. Um, so there's anything you can imagine. They have lasagna and all kinds of stuff. So, and to cook these meals, it's really simple. All you have to do is just boil water. So, <clears throat> and this is going to be really important, especially if you're getting your water straight out of um, a lake or stream or wherever. Um, make sure that it comes to a rolling boil, which means not just little fish eyes in the bottom, but actually a rolling boil in order to make sure that everything is safe. And then you just tear the top off the pouch and you pour the boiling water into the pouch. And there's a Ziploc thing built in right here. And you just zip it up and you let it sit for like five to six minutes and then you're good to go. You've got a meal. Um, another thing you have to remember to bring is something to light your stove with. Um, lighter is a good idea to bring just because it's kind of quick and easy. Um, also, if you bring matches, you want to make sure that they're waterproof matches coated in wax because regular matches will do you no good if they're wet. So another little trick we've got here is get about three and a half feet of duct tape, duct tape wrapped around the lighter. Um, that just is nice to have if your tent rips or your jacket or your backpack, whatever. You can fix anything with duct tape, really. So another important aspect of the cooking stuff is your water filter. Um, there's a lot of ways to purify water when you're out backpacking. Um, you can do iodine tablets, which just dissolve in your water bottle and kill everything. Um, this is a really popular way to do it just because it's, it tastes better than the iodine does. Um, this is a filter, and this will get rid of all the uh, disease-causing disease -causing pathogens as well as like the floating stuff in the water. So it's a, lot, it, uh, it's a lot nicer than the iodine. It's made to work with Nalgene bottles, so it's got uh, one hose that fits right in the top of your Nalgene, and then another hose that you just put into your um, water whether it be lake, stream, whatever it is. So and you want to make sure that, the, that that's in good working order before you leave, because um, that's uh, not a nice surprise to have when you're out there. So a couple other things you have in your kitchen is a pot grabber, um, which just allows you to get the hot pans on and off the stove. Um, and that's a definitely a needed thing. And some cups, um, salt and pepper, just to make the food taste a little better. Um, one little trick we've got going on here is there's lines just with a sharpie in there and that's half a cup in one cup so that you can measure water um, easily. So and other important things would be um, having obviously a good map of the area you're going to be in. That's important. Um, getting lost takes all the fun out of um, being out in the wilderness and GPS units are good. You can get handheld GPS units for a reasonably price. Um, you can also get, and what is actually better is to have a good compass and know how to use it. Um, that's probably the best way to prevent getting lost. So, um, if you uh, also one other uh, one important thing is to make sure that you keep your food scraps away from your tent um, at night. Otherwise, you will get animals in your tent. So, I hope uh, this information helps you enjoy your next backpacking experience.